So the calculus of series is a lot of fun, and it's great mathematics. But if you're practically minded, you might ask, is it actually useful for anything? And so the question we might ask, can we use the Maclaurin and Taylor series to approximate functions? And the answer is, we hope so, because otherwise we've done a lot of work for nothing useful. Now, here's a cautionary tale that suggests we should be very careful. So we can find the Maclaurin series for 1 over 1 minus x. It's going to be 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. So on the left hand side, I have a perfectly nice respectable function. Over on the right hand side, I have a Maclaurin series. So I would like the Maclaurin series and the function to have the same values. So, well, let's let x equal 2. On the left hand side, I have 1 over 1 minus 2. And on the right hand side, if x equals 2, I have 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed and so on. And we can simplify. And I find that negative 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus, uh, wait a minute. I disbelieve that this is the case. And in fact, this statement is absolute nonsense. And the problem is that this series is divergent. The terms do not go to zero. And this illustrates an important point. Nothing can be learned from a divergent series. Since we have to talk about divergence or convergence of a series, let's go back to this notion of partial sums. Suppose the Maclaurin or Taylor series is convergent for some value of x. Then what we'd like is for the sum of the infinite series to be the function value. And if that's the case, the partial sums approximate the sum of the infinite series. But the real question then becomes, so how accurately does the partial sum approximate the infinite series? And we can split the problem up into two cases. One case is easy, and the second case is, unfortunately, also easy. The easy case is that if we have an alternating and eventually decreasing series. So suppose S is an eventually alternating, eventually decreasing series. So this S without a subscript indicates the sum of the series. Then the difference between s and the nth partial sum is going to be less than the n plus first term for a sufficiently large n. And the way you can think about it is that the partial sum of an alternating decreasing series is accurate to within the first excluded term. So for example, let's say I have this series from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to n over n squared, and we want to find the sum to within 1 tenth. So we might begin by just writing down the first few terms of the series. And we see that the series is alternating and decreasing, so the alternating series theorem applies. And again, the way to think about this is that the error in using the first n terms of the series is less than the next term. So if I stop with the first term, our error will be smaller than the next term, the absolute value of 1 quarter. Since we wanted to get our series sum to within 1 tenth, this is too big. So we'll include the second term, and in that case, our error will be smaller than the next term, absolute value of 1 ninth. That's still too big. So we'll include that term, and so our error using these first three terms is going to be smaller than the next term, 1 16th. Since we wanted to find the series sum to within 1 10th, the first three terms will give us the desired accuracy. How about approximating the value of a definite integral? Say, between 0 and 1 of sine x squared to within 0.001. Now sine of x squared is not a function that we have an antiderivative for, at least not one that we can describe using elementary functions. But because it's sine, we can use the Maclaurin series for a sine. 
we'll replace x with x squared, which gives the Maclaurin series for sine of x squared. Because the Maclaurin series for sine converges for all values of x, then we can integrate termwise and then evaluate to get our definite integral expressed as a series. Now if we write down the first few terms of the series, we see that it is alternating and eventually decreasing. So we can use the remainder theorem for alternating series. So remember the remainder theorem for an alternating series is essentially that our series is accurate to within the first excluded term. So let's say we stop at the first term, then the error is smaller than the next term. And while this is a small error, it's not small enough. So let's include the next term. If we stop at the second term, the error is going to be smaller than the third term. And since we want our error to be less than 0 0.001, this will be small enough. 